Hello everyone, so in this video I will explain to you the useful tool that we are using in the automotive industry and also that you can use in any other field which is the AD problem solving. I know that many of you know already the AD problem solving but let's say I will explain it to you in the different way, in the practical way based on my experience. It's not like you can find it in Google or in other books but I made it in different way exactly how we are using it in the industry, inside the industry because it's not the same as it is described currently in Google or in the other books. So let's start. So the AD, firstly, it's the AD, it's eight do, eight actions or eight steps that you have to follow until you build or until you, you, you kill or remove the problem that you have, whether internally or received by your customer. So the first step you have to start with it's D1, which is the building the team. This one is also very, very important because many of the, let's say, of the persons are denying this step. But this is very important because whenever you are receiving any claim or whether from the customer or internally, you have to know exactly which are the persons that you have to invite to help you to solve this problem if you are the moderator. For example, if you have a problem with shipment, it, 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 you don't need, for example, to invite the maintenance team. But for example, if you have a problem in the quality in the process, for example, maybe you don't need to invite the logistical, the logistic team for the analysis. So based on the the let's say the claim or the issue or the problem you have itself, you have to define what who are the team or who are the persons that you have to invite in order to help you to solve exactly this problem, whether the maintenance, production, process, uh, logistics, quality, engineering, and so on. It's based exactly on the issue that you have. So this is the first step that you have to build or to define the team that will help you to solve this specific problem. The second step is that you have to describe exactly the problem. Sometimes the description of the problem you are receiving from the customer, it's not exactly the description of the problem. So maybe sometimes the customer is describing only the symptom of the problem. It's not the problem itself. So whenever you are receiving this, this claim from the customer, you have to ask maybe the customer so many questions or maybe you have to use the, the tool 5W2H. It's a lot of questions. Who find the problem? What is exactly the problem? How many parts? How, how they found it? How they measure it? And so on. So based on the answers of all those questions, you can summarize one description of the problem that you will put to the team in order to, to define and in order to solve this problem. The third step is the containment actions. The containment action is it's what are the actions you have to do right now in, in order to stop the bleeding, in order to stop the issue right now. What are the containment actions? Before to go beyond to analyze the root cause or to make the action plan, you have to stop right now the bleeding because the customer right now has the problem. So what are the containment actions? you have to do currently under 24 hours in order to stop the problem. Maybe you have to send the replacement to the customer or maybe you have to make some sorting to define what are the okay parts and what are the not okay parts in order to not impact the production of your customer or even internally. So also you have in this containment actions, you have to define what are the suspected batches. Sometimes you have maybe some track that is already in transit, that is already going to the customer. So you have also to define if this track uh, has also some not okay parts or some suspected production in order to stop it in the K at the customer and to check the parts before before you go or before the customer uses it. Maybe also in the containment actions you have to stop, for example, if you have two lines and you are sure that this line which is creating the problem, maybe you can stop currently this production line and to switch to another line until you analyze the root cause of this of this issue. So the containment actions, keep it in mind, what are the actions you can have to do currently right now in order to stop the issue before to go beyond the analysis of the, of the root cause and the action plan. So now let's move to the fourth steps 
of uh, the AD uh, problem solving. So the fourth step is the analysis of the root cause. So the analysis of the root cause, so many of us are making a lot of mistakes. So here I am proposing to you to follow inside this 4D three steps so the first step you have to make ishikawa diagram so the first step is to make ishikawa to analyze the potential causes so not the root cause but the potential cause so here the team should gather all the team that you have already defined in the first step and everyone should open his mind think outside the box and say what are or what could the potential root causes that could create this kind of issue so then everyone based on those five m's everyone should think outside the box and give his idea maybe it's the temperature maybe it's the human resources maybe it's the production maybe it's the raw material instruction and so on so everyone should should say it and no one is allowed to criticize the other ideas so just collect all the ideas all the potential root causes that could be the root cause after that and then the second step in the root cause analysis you have to make the brainstorming and you have to define what are the relevant and what are the not relevant potential root cause so here the team should make the brainstorming should gather together and then they have to remove the not relevant and keep only the relevant uh, let's say potential root causes how to remove the not relevant it's also with fact and data no one should say no no this is only uh, this cannot never be the root cause so just remove it no whenever someone select or say that this this one could not be the relevant root causes he should provide information and data why he decided that this one cannot be relevant for example if someone said that maybe the temperature could impact the product so if someone else during this second step said that this cannot be relevant he should provide data that the temperature was always under control all the team uh, or someone uh, is always recording every hour the temperature and he should show this card that it was always uh, under control so then you can decide that this uh, root cause it's not relevant and you can remove it so after you select the relevant and not relevant root cause then you have to go to the third step in the root cause analysis which is the five why so now you have to ask why's questions until you find out the root cause so for every relevant you have to ask why why this is a problem so the answer it's itself you have to ask again why this one for example if someone said that this is an operator mistake in Ishikawa so you have to ask why the operator made the mistake so the answer could be for example that he didn't made the training during his integration so then you have to ask again the question why he didn't make the training made the training during his integration so the answer could be there is a missing of instruction or procedure in the HR uh, resources uh, department so then you have to ask again question why there is a missing of procedure of integration with the HR uh, in the HR departments for the new uh, hiring uh, workers then the answer maybe it could be there is a missing of a quality system then you have to ask again so you have to ask ask why why until you find out the root cause exactly the five numbers it's not exactly means it's not required to ask only five times the question why can be less can be more but the purpose is to find the root cause and whenever you find the root cause so if you turn it off the problem will disappear and if you turn it on the problem will appear again so this is exactly what is the root cause that you have to find so when you find the root cause using the five y then you have to go to the fifth step of the ad report which is five do which is the action plan so then you have to implement actions in order to remove those root cause analysis so for every root cause you find in the fourth step you have to implement actions in order to 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 to, to remove those root causes and the action plan should have firstly a description of the action secondly it should have the owner means who will make this action 
And third, it should have a due date or deadline of the implementation of the action. So you have to make it in terms of a table and then you will describe all the actions, all the owners and all the due dates that you have to follow until the implementation of those actions. Then you have to move to the step six which is d6 which is the validation of the actions obviously you cannot decide that this is action you implement it and that's it no you have to follow the implementation of the action to know if those actions are valid are efficient or not so maybe you can follow all the product that you will produce after the implementation and you will check if the problem will disappear or not so if it's disappear during one period of time that you have to define so then you will say that yes the actions are effectiveness uh, and then are valid and then you can uh, validate those actions otherwise if the problem would appear again so means that the root cause analysis and the action you made are wrong are not the, the efficient so then you have to start again from the step four to make again the root cause analysis and so on then after the validation of all the actions you have to move to the d7 which is the preventive actions so here you have to think how you will prevent this kind of action to not happen again for example if we have a problem in the for example in, in in a product and after the analysis you find out that there is a pin which was broken so then after the analysis this is what was the root cause and as the action you you, you implemented to change this pin but in the seven the the the, the step d7 you have to implement preventive actions so because if it was broken so even you change it one time one day it will broken again so what are the preventive actions that you have to implement in order to avoid this pin to not be broken again so maybe you can add it in the control check sheet so maybe every day the worker will open the machine check if the pin is okay or not and make it uh, and cross it as, as okay so you have to implement all the preventive actions or maybe you can add it in the maintenance first level that you are doing a daily in order to check this pin and so on so you have to make all the preventive actions in order to avoid this kind of problem to not happen again so once you finish all the preventive actions you update the documentation you made the preventive actions maybe you you went beyond the, to the pfma and so on then you have to go to the last step which is ad uh, d8 so in this step you have to make the lessons learned and follow up of the actions so what are the lessons learned that you learned after all this problem solving so all what you implemented in this production line in this machine you have to make capitalization you have to project the same actions to the all other project machines and so on imagine you have the same machine in different projects and once you receive the claim from this project from this customer you made the actions only on this machine but you have the same machines in the other projects so maybe you have the same risk so once you finish here if you don't go beyond and made the same actions in the other machines one day you will receive the same claim claim from other customers from other projects so once you finish you have to look up and to see what are the other process other plants other uh, let's say regions other machines that could have the similar issue or process then you have to put and to implement the same actions in other projects other machines and other process in order to avoid this kind of problem it's let's say it's the, 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 the a kind of pdca a kind of thinking outside the box and so on so like that you will complete all your ed reports with the eight steps that could be described here so i hope that this video will help you to understand and to start to implement and to use this useful tool to analyze the internal or external issues whether you have it internally or whether you receive it from from your customer so see you next time bye bye